Welcome everybody. Welcome back to another one of my Powerbox series of videos. I hope you're enjoying them so far. Anyway, in this video we're going to be looking at the wireless student trainer function or also commonly referred to as buddy boxing between two uh, transmitters. Now one of the unique features of the core and atom transmitters is they can accept an SBUS input. So we're going to be using that feature to actually connect a Fataba transmitter to my Powerbox core radio. So the Powerbox core transmitter will act as the uh, master or uh, trainer transmitter and the student transmitter or slave will be the Fataba 18SZ on the left hand side. At the moment I've set up a Powerbox core receiver with two servos so it's a very complicated aircraft. I've got two channels. I've got a throttle channel and a rudder. Very complex and good enough for this example. Anyway, let's move on. So, we now know that the Powerbox transmitter can receive an SBUS input. We need to bind the 18SZ to a receiver that can output SBUS. So in this particular case, I'm using a um, Fataba receiver. It's actually a, um, just waiting for my camera to focus. It's just a receiver I had laying around in uh, my spares box. Um, it's an R6303. It's just a small receiver. I've got a bit of Velcro on the back because normally I attach that to the back of my core transmitter with the Velcro. And you'll notice I've also cut the antennas a little bit shorter because normally this has two long coaxial antennas and I've actually cut them and modified them and just stuck them to the side of the case. Um, in this particular instance, using as a buddy box setup, the receiver only has to have uh, you know, very small range um, and that, that, that gives me plenty of range because normally the uh, student pilot is standing close by. So taping the, re the receiver antennas to the case of that has no impact on performance uh, in this particular instance. And we've got the one lead which uh, is connected to the SBUS port. So again you need a receiver which features SBUS output. It only works with SBUS and this particular receiver does support that function. So the, when we plug this into the core, the core will provide power to the receiver and the receiver will provide the SBUS signal back into the core. And obviously we're going to bound the um, 18SZ, the Fataba 18SZ, to this receiver. It's actually already bound anyway. Alright, I'll just zoom the camera out a little bit so we can have a bit of a look. So let's go the other way. So underneath the flap on the core, I'll just plug in the uh, receiver into the servo PPM socket. So the servo PPM socket normally doubles um, as a servo test port as well. So you can plug in a servo and test it at the field for instance, or if you're at home. And it also doubles as an SBUS input. So it's auto-detecting, so the transmitter will actually auto-detect that that feature. As you can notice uh, the receiver's got a little green LED indicating that it's bound to my 18SZ. So that's all ready to go. Uh, at the moment we obviously haven't set up the trainer function so I've only got the controls on my core currently operational. Okay let's zoom back in a bit. Now hopefully you'll be able to see the screen okay. I still want to keep the sticks in view. Okay that should be okay. Okay, so first up, we need to set up the trainer function obviously. So where do we do that? So let's go into the uh, main menu and we scroll down to the trainer cord settings. So this little icon here, select that. And as you can see, there's not much set up in it at the moment. So one of the first things we need to set up is decide what switch we're gonna use for the trainer function. So let's go ahead and select the switch. Now. We can select a physical switch, you can select a virtual switch, you can even select a telemetry value to trigger this. Um, you can have obviously an analog input as well. But in this particular case, I'm just going to select my two position right hand side rear switch, which is switch N. You'll notice being it, uh, highlighted here in the uh, graphic. Let's click on OK. Uh, we've got to set its on position. Um, I'm going to have it on when I pull it towards myself. So that's pulled towards myself, that's 
back away from myself it's fairly simple and let's try it out so that's on off on off so the little cross little red cross and the green trying uh, green tick shows us the um, switching sequence there okay so we selected our switch the next thing we need to do is map what controls we want to control so like I said in this complex aircraft we only have the two controls we've just got basically my throttle and rudder being mode 2 that's normally my rudder so let's have a look let's go for the first input so all we need to do is move the stick it automatically selects stick A which is my throttle stick click on OK and let's also select the rudder so there's my rudder movement stick B or STB so you've got throttle up the top and then rudder and now this is where we actually map those two controls to my Futaba radio so at the moment the Futaba radio is transmitting to the receiver to the little Futaba receiver and that's outputting SBUS into the core okay let's map the throttle all we need to do is select it it's auto detecting so I just move the throttle stick up and down now and you'll notice on the core it's selected external channel 3 so that's SBUS channel 3 which is the default for throttle on a Futaba setup so we just hit save and that's saved it and you'll notice a little green tick so we can actually um, disable these controls so for instance you might have multiple controls and it might not just be your flight surfaces you could have switches and whatever you can actually enable them and disable them depending on what you want to teach the uh, student okay let's do the rudder so same thing but this time I'll move the stick over say to my right and you'll notice it's selected channel 4 so channel 4 is the default in the um, Futaba system hit save and there we have it so as far as the Futaba transmitter is concerned I've just set up a real basic uh, model um, just single channels there's no mixing or anything and all the channels are just um, set to plus or minus 100% travel easy as so that's pretty much as far as the uh, trainer setup is concerned um, you can actually disable it from here as well so it's a quick on off so I'll just leave it enabled at the moment uh, one other thing I'd like to show you while I'm here um, let's go to the setup or setting screen and then system you'll notice if I scroll down here the servo data so that pertains to the servo port that we're using so servo data you'll notice it might be a bit hard to read but it actually says SBUS in so it's detected the SBUS input so the core knows that there's SBUS, an SBUS signal on that connector okay well that's pretty much it so all we need to do now is we're flying around again the core's the master I can control it here and there's nothing on the Futaba however if I flick the switch I've got nothing on the core now so now theoretically the student has control simple as that I flick the switch back back to the core and nothing on the Futaba okay so that's Futaba so that's easy so if you have a um, another system like for instance if you have say FR Sky if you've got one of their receivers which outputs SBUS you could use an FR Sky transmitter um, pretty much any other system that does support SBUS can be used in this way now one other trick thing is is when we move over to Spectrum so as you probably be aware that the majority of uh, transmitters probably at most of your uh, flying fields are spectrum based because it's a very popular system how do we get a spectrum radio to actually um, work in this buddy box setup well it's not that difficult so it's very similar except there's one little trick I'll show you that we need to do there's a little bit of extra hardware involved so what I'll do is I'll just delete everything just for this example Uh, disable it, get rid of the switch so basically there's nothing in the trainer function and I'll just remove my Futaba receiver off the core so I've got the receiver out now 
Let's turn off the 18SZ. And I don't have a current Spectrum radio, but I do have my trusty old JR12X, which is actually a DSMX, Spectrum DSMX radio anyway. So effectively a Spectrum transmitter. All right, I'll just put it here so we've got a good view of that as well. You can check the uh, throttle stick. Okie doke. Now, now, this is where the um, extra bit of hardware comes in. So, what you need to do for the um, Spectrum equipment, you need a Spectrum receiver, of course. However, there's not very many Spectrum receivers that offer SBUS output that I'm aware of. So in this particular case, what I've done is I've got a Spectrum receiver. So I've got a, a model that's bound uh, in my 12X to this particular receiver. But I, I, I use an additional hardware module which is just stuck to the bottom. And I'll, I've got a spare one here I'll show you. So it's called a Fataba SB-1. So this particular device here allows us to feed PWM, so normal servo um, inputs, and it gives us an SBUS output. So basically this converts PWM to SBUS. So all you need to do is plug that into any receiver you like that provides some sort of servo connection, and this little handy device gives us an SBUS output. And of course we can plug this device straight into the core. So effectively you can use any systems receiver, it doesn't have to be Spectrum, um, this is just an example for Spectrum, um, but yeah, any receiver, and basically if you look carefully, I've taken the servo outputs from this AR620 and connected them to the SB, Fataba SB-1 converter, there's a few spare ones there of course, because the Fataba converter can support up to 10 channels, this particular receiver only does 6, however it gives me the SBUS output. A bit of double sided tape, a bit of velcro, and again, that just sticks to the back of my core transmitter. Easy as. Okay, let's plug this guy in. So again, I'll just zoom out. And it's a bit fiddly here. But I'll just, um, just get in the way of the tripod and all the camera equipment. Plug it in. And uh, we've got a little green light flashing. You may be able to see that on the Fataba interface. Let's be able to pick up on the camera. And I'll just turn on my 12X. And you'll notice the orange bind light comes on because I've already bound this uh, receiver to the uh, JR12X. And now as far as the system is concerned, it doesn't doesn't care anymore, it's receiving SBUS in, so it's pretty much the same as the Fataba setup now. I'll just zoom in again. Give us a bit of closer view of the screen. Hopefully that's okay. I might just lock the focus on my camera so it doesn't move around all the place. And basically the same thing, so going to the telemetry, uh, sorry, the trainer cord settings menu, not the telemetry menu. Set up our switch again, we'll use the same switch, only because it's easy for me to reach. Uh, select the on position for the switch. And same sort of thing here, we're going to set the controls, map the controls around. So let's do throttle first, so throttle stick on the core. Let's map it to the throttle on the JR. Now remember for Tabo is channel 3, let's see what happens now. Oh, got channel 1. And that's because on a Spectrum system, the throttle is on channel 1 as a default. So let's save that. Let's add the uh, rudder function as well, or the rudder control. Let's map the channel. Move over to the 12X, move the rudder stick. And there we go, channel 4, which is the default uh, rudder function on Spectrum or JR in the old days. Okay, um, and that's pretty much it. So now it's enabled. Um, I'll just go back to the uh, main screen. We can control it with the core, as I showed you before. No, no dramas there. Then as you're flying, flick the switch, and now the student has control, but over on the JR radio. Simple as that. Easy. 
So once again, using the um, little Fataba SB-1 converter module um, allows us this functionality. So this is quite handy because you can use this with other receivers as well. So pretty much any radio system can be used in this manner. Okay, thanks very much.